Hey everyone, Doug and Carl coming at you with uh, another weekly edition of uh, T-Jet Club. Uh, we took a week off from the auction, but we're going to talk about one of the classes, the next class in our local uh, club racing, which is starting this week. Nice. This weekend, yeah. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. And, and then we'll, uh, we'll end up with uh, showing off the cars that we're going to be auctioning off Next Monday evening, the uh, November or October fifth at six thirty p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So, um, yeah, as we we talk about our club, which is Hosers, um, Facebook dot com forward slash RC Hosers is where you can find all the information. We got videos and pictures and and all kinds of fun stuff. But uh, that's where our our local club races. There's we got continually growing and growing. We've got Usually, fifteen to twelve to fifteen people show up every week and race, and it makes for a longer and longer day every day. It does. <laughs> but I, I can remember years where there was only six or eight of us. You know, yeah. so it's it's a fun to have new guys in there for sure. Yeah. So we uh, are getting ready to kick off our season, um, and we're not even starting with T Jets, which it's a T Jet Club. Come on. Getting them, getting them out of the way <laughs> early, right. apparently. So. That's right. It's kind of like when you when you have a meal, you, you save the best part to last. That's right. You know, so you get rid of all the, the carrots and stuff first. <laughs> but, um, you, you don't want to finish with the AFX Magna Traction class because that's late in the year, yeah. you know, or in the beginning of the year where people start getting thin. So you yeah. want to finish with these yet so you got yeah. people showing up. Yeah. And, and I found out when you start with a, like an AFX Magna Traction class, and then you go to T-Jet, it's like, wow, I can drive these things. <laughs> yes, this isn't that bad. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But if you start with T-Jet and then move to AFX, you're, you're constantly crashing. <laughs> the first couple of weeks, you're pretty hard on your equipment. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so um, let's overview the classes we've covered and the next class in our series. I'll hand it over to Carl and let him talk about the classes that uh, in, our, in our club. Right. Uh, once again, you know, the Hosers cl Club is a, a T-Jet-based club and and we've gone through stock tire t-jet which is virtually a stock chassis with true rear tires and then what we call stock t-jet which allows for the skinny silicone tire other than that the rules really don't change uh, then we talked about Eurojet, which was a spec wheel and tire class which is a, a fan and then the body it had to be a european sports car body what we do allow the cobra the gt40 uh, in there uh, and then we went to uh, what we call the big tire class, which used to be the hot rod class, but now we allow the Indy car and the Doom buggy, uh, and that is on uh, stock hot rod style chassis with silicones in the back. And uh, so now we step away from all these stock based classes, and we're going to go into what we call. Uh, well, then we had the bomber. Don't forget the bomber class, yeah. and, and then uh, now we go into super stock. And this is where we really we let it fly in super stock. In super stock, you can run an auto world chassis, you can run a dash chassis, you can run a, a T jet chassis, you can run uh, the old Johnny Lightning chassis, uh, and uh, I've even got one of those. And uh, the armature is open once again. We limit the magnets to the to the dash blue and white magnet just that's the strongest magnet you can run uh you can lower you can cut you can modify you can do whatever you want with the bodies uh, some people run resins uh you know you can't uh, it has to be a body it can't be a lexan body or anything like that uh silicone sponge tires becomes the norm in this class uh, some people do get away with some slip-ons, but it's only on particular cars that can get away with that. Uh, when we first started running these years and years ago, this is not a class that I really warmed up to and had very few cars that actually ran in it because I was so focused on everything else. But in the last four years, I've, I've really started to warm up to Superstock, and we've had some amazingly fun races. It's, it's interesting to me that people can show up with such different setups and then uh, be competitive with one another instead of just total blowouts, which does still happen in super stock. And, and, uh, but I, I, I've really started to warm up to the class since I started just building stuff that I wanted to build and, instead of trying to build something that was always going to win. Because that's difficult in super stock. And uh, the cars are so different on whatever track you're running on. 
and uh, that you you won't get away with having one super stock because there's going to be some tracks that it flat will not function uh, in a competitive sense. But uh, super stock, we once again we allow the the armature to be changed. You can run the silicone sponge tires. You can change the gearing. You can you can have uh, lightened gears. You can do all of those kinds of things in super stock. And I suppose the only real restriction is uh, the magnet restriction. And uh, that's about it, actually. And yeah, so, you can run 12, 14 tooth gears. You yeah, can... absolutely. Yep. And, uh, and there's quite a mixture. A lot of guys do yep. show up with a 14 tooth gear. And, and then the 14 tooth gear and super stock, is, uh, it makes for a really, really fast car that's incredibly hard to drive. <laughs> and so and that's always a good time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I finally did last year, I finally put one 14 tooth together and a 12. And I got to admit, I really liked the 12. I thought it was a good balance uh, between the two. And so to give you an idea of what you do in Superstock, this is the first one I ever built right here. And it's just a, a Johnny Lightning a Challenger. And for those people who don't know, these are outstanding handling bodies, really in any class you use them on. This, I really like this Challenger. It, uh, uh, this one's got a pulled window that I did. And, and of course, it's been lowered and stuff. Now, you're going to have to, you've mentioned this a few times in a couple of the classes, but... Um, explain what a pulled window is. A, a pulled window. I have a vacuum forming machine, and so what I do is I take an original window and put it in that vacuum former, and then I pull uh, an eight to ten thousandths piece of heated Lexan across it, and it, it vacuums it down and basically reforms it. And then you you take that off and then trim it up, and it, so you can see that one, and uh, and it's a, a much thinner. Uh, lighter windshield and uh, and i've pulled a lot of windshields for different guys in the different clubs and st or in the different classes and stuff and it's kind of fun i really get a kick out of it and uh, but this car is a little special to me because i started making my own tires when this class came around and so that's that was the first set of tires silicone sponge tires that i made right there and uh, i call them the setter bees and uh and they're they're a little wide. I, you, you learn things as you go through life. When I first put this car together, it was actually competitive, and uh, but uh, it really isn't anymore. But I still try and run it at least once a year because I just because I, I like it so much. But that's my original Satter bees that I stacked foam and glued it all together and cut it down and siliconed them, and it, it was quite a process. But I had a lot of fun with it. And then the second car I built was this one right here, and I really dig these. And these are good handling cars too, actually. Uh, they're pretty hard to find, and I, I, I cut the trunk out to clear the gear, you know, so I could get it down there. And uh, it's pretty much just an Aurora car. Uh, it, it only has the front windshield left in it because you don't have to run glass in this class you don't have to run bumpers really do anything but but i like cars that i you know and, and you'll notice that i've soldered the plates together in there and this is another set of my silicones i wanted aluminum wheels with slip on or with silicone sponge tires so i made my own right there and uh, and they come out pretty good i i was pretty happy with them uh, when I first did them, the silicone came off, but it had too much traction. So when I did them the second time, I added a few coats. And each time you add a coat, the uh, traction level goes down and uh, they, they get less tacky. And this car really improved when I recoated the tires. And, uh, and this used to be a fairly good car, but it's no longer competitive in this class. And this is the third one I put together. I just loved that body. And uh, so I just built it. And this one, oh, this one here, this is also interesting. This is the beauty of Superstock. Uh, it's a piece of brass tubing that runs across there. And that is cassette wheels. Now, I don't know how many, I don't know how many <laughs> HO guys know that if you kill cassettes, then the, the little wheels in the corners make great HO wheels. I, I can hear cassettes being broken That's all right. over the country and, right and, now. And the younger people are going, what's a cassette? What's a cassette, yeah. And uh, <laughs> it's obviously where you get wheels. But I really liked some of the wheels that had the see-through spokes. Not all the cassettes had that. Some of them are solid. I mean, they're really good looking, actually. I've got a jar full of them. Uh, and then that was just one of the resins. And I put a driver in there. You can see the little driver. That's another body that I cut out of a, a shadow car. And, uh, and Doug, uh, Doug, uh, Crawford did the decals for me. He did a fantastic job. 
this was my latest attempt to get serious about uh, super stock. And so the chassis is coming up through it. This chassis was actually under uh, a car that I turned into a bomber, but I moved it over to this one. And I really had fun with this last year, and it actually proved itself to be a decent car. And uh, But this is on a more traditional, thinner, smaller tire. You know, when I built these, I thought that was the way to go, but it's actually too much tire. It is too wide, and it, and it makes the car... Uh, it handles tight in the so when you go to the skinnier smaller tires then they start to get a little more loose a little more controllable and the tire doesn't come in contact with the rail uh as quickly as it does with the wider tires and you'll also notice that chassis has been uh, dyed i dyed that in a golden something or other writ dye years and years ago and i thought it come out just beautiful and uh, that was kind of a fun one. And then uh, I, this was another one where I, I started to do the things you can do in Superstock, right? Here's the light and gear set. Here's another set of my homemade silicone sponges, but a little bit smaller a little bit narrower on aluminum rims. Uh, and then I drilled and really had to put a lot of work into those. That's an 065 axle, a lot of brass front ends. A lot of the guys run brass front ends. We do not allow, that's another rule. We do not allow what they call dynamic front ends in super stock. It has to be a rotating weight front end. Uh, and then this was one I put together years ago and I, I had a lot of fun with this one. This one pulled out a win last year mm -hmm. and I was pretty damn happy with that, but that's a resin. Uh, a gremlin in the AMC colors there, and I thought, and that's a real standard, uh, simple chassis. I think this is the one I put the 12 in. I think that's the one that's got the 12, and I really had a good time with that. And then this is a, uh, uh, it's got the plastic gears, and uh, I've done two of these. Is that a Johnny Lightning? I think it is, yeah. Or Auto World. Is it Auto World? I don't know, Johnny Lighting or Auto World. I don't know that I've done an Auto World, but this has the plastic gears in it. Um, you know, I've soldered it up. I went to the wide shoes on this one. This one works really good at Bob Marion's Tyco track, anyway. And, with the six inch uh, corners. With the six inch corners, yeah. You mm -hmm. need them wide shoes. I've shimmed it. A set of those narrow silicones, weighted front end, and then just lowered the crap out of it. But it's, uh, that's a pretty good car. This one still needs work. But this one is the one that I, I really kind of stepped out on. And you can see the plates all drilled full of holes. There's there's some holes in the middle. And I just I just really had fun. Like, oh, here, this is an auto world because there's where the magnet used to be. And so this is my auto world. Uh, uh, one thing, if you're going to run the auto world, you have to replace this back shaft. And just, just replace it with a, with a nice shaft that uh, used to be an axle, cut an axle back. And if you do that, all of a sudden you've got a car. Cause that shaft they use in the back is horrific. And when you get it out, you'll see that it's just a total piece of crap. And, uh, once I did that, this, this car has pulled off quite a few wins. And, uh, but it's super light, super low, and, uh, it's just a really fun car. And then Doug brought some of his. Yeah, I brought, I brought some of my, uh, um, super stocks as well. Uh, this first one is, um, I think that's a uh, Johnny Lightning. Johnny, early Johnny yeah. Lightning. And, oh. and it was, uh, green, lime green. But, uh, a friend of mine said, send me that body and I'll do it up nice for you. So I sent it to him and he actually did the paint, did all the decals. And, and this thing just turns out fantastic. It's a, a Wendell Scott, um, version of uh, Superstock. And you can see, I mean, look at the, the front wheels. They're, they're lower than the fender, but that's one of the, the neat things about Superstock. If you look at the, the very back, it's, it's cut away there just so you can get that down a little bit lower. And this one actually runs really well. Um, here's another one that's, that's fairly stupid low. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is the one I said you can't run a headliner in this car because the gears will chew it up. But if you look at the side profile, the gears stick out quite quite well. Um, this one, when I got this body, it had a big old hole in the hood where the the uh, body post had busted out. So I used a uh, front um, T jet wheel as a as an air cleaner, and it worked good. Uh, you look at the I don't even remember where I got these front wheels. They're they're translucent, but they work good. Um, and this car is one of those. Uh, it's you make up all of the the time that you lose in the corners because it's got a either a 12 or a 14 tooth gear 
in the straightaways. So if anybody's faster than you in the corners, you make it up in the straightaways and then you crash in the corners. So, right. So, but you get there first. <clears throat> yeah. Um, here's my uh, uh, Tornado, which is a, uh, you can see it, the front end, is it sits up. It's kind of a gasser. Yeah, it's definitely a gasser. But this one's fun to run. It doesn't handle worth a, a darn the way it's set up. But sometimes it's not all about that. It's about having fun. And this one I have fun with it every once in a while. So, uh, let's see. Here we go. This is another 12-tooth um, car that is really fast in the straightaways. Doesn't handle worth a darn in the corners. But it's fun to run. Uh, you can see this uh, Galaxy. It's got the the cutaway for the gear to stick yeah, isn't, through. Isn't that cool? I think yeah. that's fun. I, yeah. I wanted a car I could do that yeah. too. It just have, it's only yellow cars apparently that you can do yeah. that too. Yeah, and if you look, the body <laughs> posts on this is busted out. So so whenever I get a car that a body post is busted out or something, it's free reign. I can do whatever that's I want. Right. You don't something. even feel bad. That's right, that's right. This is um, our, our 16th annual invitational car that um, I had to turn into a super stock. And amazingly, this thing handles well. You wouldn't you wouldn't think looking at this car that it would handle well, but it really does. I love that lowered. I, I've never seen one yeah. lowered. I really like that. That yeah. looks good. But uh, and everybody in our group has one of these cars, and I'm sure now they're all going to be lowering them and <laughs> turning them into super stock. I will be the only yeah, one. That's right. That's right. Um, this one, Mangusta. You you got to run a Mangusta you can't go in every class. With a mangusta, I, yeah. I try and and get a Mangusta in every class. <laughs> you, you and know. me both. Yeah, since it's Italian, you can run it in uh, European, you know, Eurojet. Eurojet, yeah, that's right. You know, it's uh, I got one in uh, stock uh, class. Uh, I got one in a bomber, and then I got this one in a super. And uh, and the front windshield, when I got this, it didn't have any glass in it. So this front windshield is just a piece of plastic out of a. A wrapper of some sort that I glued in place. Two liter bottles will give up good yeah. glass yeah. too. A lot of these cars are actually on um, slip-on um, tires, and they handle okay. You know, a lot of them they have the the, the silicone um, tires, but fray but, style. Yeah, but there's a few of the cars that actually handle. And depending on what track you're running on, if it's a short track, uh, you can get away with running the the slip-on tires, and they work all right. Now this one. I've, I've tried this in just about every class, and it is depressing how, how bad this car drives. <laughs> but this is my uh, um, my J car, and, and uh, you can see the front of it doesn't have the little torpedoes hanging out anymore. I've turned it into a, a ranch arrow, um, and it still doesn't handle worth yeah, it. That's for easy oil. Yeah. So don't be surprised if you see this car coming up in an auction here. Be soon. prepared. That's right. Because what I'll do is I'll, I'll build a car and I'll have fun with it. But then after a while, when the fun wears off, if if I can't do anything with it, I'll give it to somebody who can. So um, here's, a, here's a cool car. This is a, a, I've got one real similar to it in the Eurojet class. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to take one and super stock it. And I've, I still got a little bit of work to do to it, but I haven't run this one yet. So we'll find out if it works or not. And then the Jewel. This is this is my favorite Tour super stock car. It is a, a Jaguar, and and it's fairly lowered. Ferrari when I, GTO. Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry, the, the Ferrari. But it's uh, when I got it, it was wheel weld pretty good, so free reign. Um, and then if you look at the hood, this is <laughs> when it's going around the track. Most people don't realize that there really is no hood to this car. Um, I painted the uh, the top plate to match the hood so that it looks cool <laughs> and i think i ran this one or two car one or two races before anybody realized hey wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> so so don't be surprised if you see more cars like this coming but, in our but that's too. how you lower a ferrari gto yeah. right to the ground right yeah. there that's yeah and if you look at the the profile <laughs> when this goes you see little plastic sparks coming off yeah. of the the door <laughs> <laughs> and don't worry they won't catch anything on fire yeah yeah that's true <laughs> that's true but again, on all these cars, they're they're all they fit into a uh, the what do you call the plate? Oh, um, the, the the width, width gauge. The width yeah. gauge, yeah, yeah. Uh, the same one that they use in a fray. So that's another restriction. It's got to be that wide. Um, but other than that, it's like yeah, the no crazy, no dynamic front end. So it has to be a rotational front yeah. end. Yeah. So, um, but like I said, I started warming up to the class once you. 
you start doing the things in this class that you can't do in any of the other classes. And so it's fun to, to uh, try the different gears and mm -hmm. stuff. And I had a lot of fun with it last yeah. year. And, and I found that this class, you know, it, it makes me a better racer because oh. you build these cards that are stupid fast, but you can't win if you can't keep it on the track. So, so you've got to realize, sure, I've got all that power, but... I can't use it, you know. And there, there might be a little blip here where you can use it a little bit here, a little bit there. But if you try and, and use everything you got, you're going to... Um, well, and then when you get into the heat of the race and you're running someone else, you start pushing it a little bit harder and a yeah. little bit harder. And uh, But like I said, I think it's interesting that people can show up with such different setups mm -hmm. and then still have really fun competitive races. And Now, this class will frustrate the tar out of you if you let it, and, uh, and, it, and it's done that a few times to me. Yep. And then just a real quick aside, one of the worst handling bodies that Roar ever made. Yep. Absolutely, the best handling body that Aurora ever made. Just throwing that out there, yeah. and uh, <laughs> yeah, and it's funny because this one it, it doesn't handle worth a darn in the corners. But there's a couple of tracks where this is competitive because it's got long straightaways, and if I don't overdrive in the corners, then then it, it's neat because I'll try this on on a cla on a track that's got a lot of twists and turns, yeah. and you lose everything that you gain in the straightaway. But uh, it's still fun to run. So yeah, this is the first time that uh, I built. Well, the second time now with that Gremlin. That's the first short wheelbase. Uh, car and that, one, that one's kind of a handful. You really got to drive that, and so and, and concentrate. But right. uh, yeah, so that is our super stock class, um, and and it's it's a hoot. It's a lot of fun. So um, next time we'll start talking about some freight classes. Yeah, we'll finally step out of uh, the the hoser T jet classes, and then uh, we'll talk about the fray. And then the only thing left after that would be the. AFX Magna Traction 4 gear. That's what we should actually talk about next week because that's what we're going to start our season on is mm -hmm. uh, the AFX Magna Traction 4 gear. And, and the 4 gear class is uh, is one of great contention, <laughs> but uh, I think it's an absolute blast. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, let's we'll start with those and then we'll throw trucks in. Yep, yep, and, absolutely. Uh, and then, uh, well, then we'll finish out with what we do with Frey because the Frey's still a little ways away. So. Yep. All right, so now we're going to talk about the auction coming up um, October 5th at 6.30 p.m. Mountain Test Standard Time, um, and we'll highlight some of the cards that we're going to be auctioning off. So I'll hand it over to Carl again and let him uh, tell you what's coming up. Oh, and then remember, the theme of this or next week's auction yep. is, uh, is every car that Mike didn't want. Okay, so these yeah. are all Mike rejects. Mike's yeah. came over and he told me, well, I don't want that, and I don't want that, and I don't like those. And so <laughs> we joked about how many four J cars were going to be in there, and there actually is a few. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that did happen well, that and, way. And Mike is is one of the, the guys in our club who who races real cars as well. He races That's right, and and is this year's? Yeah, he's uh, the track champion. Track champion, and yeah. and he won uh, what was it two features in one night? I think. Oh, is that right? Yeah, I know he won two weekends in a row. Correct. Yeah. Yep. And uh, uh, so, anyway, these are all the cars. He came over, looked at them, and went, "Yeah, yeah." Yeah. And so I was like, "Okay," and they go in the box. Yeah. Uh, so he run he runs the three hundred and sixty sprint car. So, so right. anything that that is uh, has a wing on it, he probably likes. He probably he's okay with them. Yeah. 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 So, so. so I'll hand it over and, and talk about the 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 cars that Mike. I'm sure he's going to be bidding on some of these when they come up. Right? <laughs> we'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah, okay. Maybe he's changed his mind, yeah, right? I mean, he's, maybe he's grown up a little bit <laughs> since then. But uh, anyway, well, uh, this week we are going to have, uh, real quick, we're going to have another Bob Beers Corvette. Uh, that's going to be in there, if anyone's interested in that. And if you notice, there's no orange cars and there's no purple that's, cars. That is absolutely because true. if yeah. anything has orange and purple on it, Mike is a fan. Uh, this car is back up. Uh, we actually sold this two, three weeks ago, and the guy never friended me. He never responded, and I couldn't figure out who or where he was. And so this car is going to come back up, and uh, and this is just about as original of a car as you're going to find. And uh, so everybody will probably remember that car, but we'll go back over it again. The Ford but, Escort. Uh, the Escort with all of the off-road stuff. And then, of course, this week's Junker Camaro. We're going to have another Junker Camaro, total racer, ready to go. 
and uh, be modified. We gotta have one of them every week. Uh, here's one of the G pluses. This kind of needs a sticker kit, but outside of that, that's a pretty good car. Both mirrors are on it. Some of the stickers are okay. And it does have a complete chassis. So that was a reject from Mike. And then uh, this guy. I don't know how many people really have one of these, but uh, the wings on it. Uh, sticker still in the bottom. Uh, it's in pretty good shape, but we'll go around it when we get to the auction. And then uh, two more of, uh, I think this is going to be a reoccurring theme for a while, but this is two more of the Dash uh, Fairlanes. And uh, basically unmounted uh, new bodies. And then I have two of them. This one here is kind of attractive. I, 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 at first, I, I didn't think it was that good, but the more I looked at it, I thought, that's actually pretty good looking with that red top. And uh, once again, just uh, new old stock stuff. That, and there's gonna be two of them. And then uh, we, we gotta finish out with some Tycos. Got a NASCAR car. This car needs a little bit of the hydrogen peroxide trick. Uh, oh, I want to save that for last because that's that's the one I mm -hmm. think is going to be so cool. We haven't run one of these. I've got a few of them, and I wanted to see if anyone wanted one to restore, display, modify, and then we'll do that one real quick, and that'll be up. And then you know this is this is another one here. Uh, Mike just totally poo pooed that, but it does have a nice AFX chassis on it. I don't know how many people need or want one of them. And then I'll tell you, I'll tell people what I do with the bad ones of those, and mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, that'll put the values way up really high. And then we've got a really nice lifelike truck with an M chassis underneath it. Well, that's a nice chassis, and it's, it's fun to find an M chassis that's not just run to death. And then uh, we've got to. Uh, it wasn't Earnhardt that ran the three. What was the truck? Well, who was it? Is it uh, off Skinner? The yeah, it might have been. Scary. Yeah, so this is a, a real decent number three. I don't want to call it an earned hair truck because I don't want to get people mad. Mm -hmm. And uh, But it's a really good one. It's good and clean. It's got a sweetheart of a chassis underneath it. And we hadn't run any trucks. So I thought, okay, let's run a couple trucks. So that'll be the two trucks that we got. And now you'll notice I'm saving the T-Jet. Oh, and the mystery box is going to be back. It took me a little while to think about what I wanted to do in a mystery box, but uh, it's going to be fun, and the mystery box will return. And rather than giving away a T-shirt this this next sale on the 5th, uh, I'm going to have a car. And uh, so I haven't decided which car it is yet, and, uh, but we'll have a car, and then as you win auctions, then we'll do that same raffle again, and we'll get to use my bingo ball machine, which go. just makes my day. And uh, so, oh, let's talk about this guy real quick. Now, I know everybody knows what a shadow car is. And I know, you know, a lot of people have shadow cars and they think they've got that covered in their collection. But a lot of people don't know that there was the super rare Shadow 102. Okay. And this is, you know, clearly a one of a kind piece of equipment right here. And so that's the Shadow 102. And uh, yeah, this was. Uh, you know, they, they oh, this just happens to be a low wing version. A lot of guys don't know that, but they made a high wing and a low wing, and this is a low wing. But uh, I thought that that's going to be fun. We're going to put that up, and if no one bids on it, I'm going to raise it. <laughs> gonna, it's going to go in the magnet traction. Magnet traction class. This is the style of bodies that we run. And and, uh, and many people have tried to run a shadow car in our magnet traction. Zero have been successful. And it's it's not easy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one time. Uh, Peter showed up with one on Mike's track, and it was kind of impressive. And then a bunch of people tried it and realized, well, that's crap. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so we're going to have a run of TGS that were completely rejected. Uh, look, that's a new old stock chassis under that one. This one is missing the wing, but uh, good color combination that you don't see very often. And Mike said, Pah! and so here it's here. Okay, then this week's hot rod's a little on the rough side, but he, he totally dejected it. So I thought, well, let's throw another body in there. Uh, and, uh, and then that way, you know, a guy can do something. So you're going to have two bodies. And then look at that. Early solid rivet chassis with the white gear. And that's All actually right. one of my favorite chassis right there. And then we're going to just do a bunch of builder stuff this time. And I think it's going to be fine. I don't know why this one has no screw in the front, but it doesn't. And, uh, That's this, why Mike said, I don't like it. Yeah, out, out. Yeah. And, and, uh, and the rear wheel cut. <laughs> it could have something to do with it. But anyway, and, uh, so, and another, <laughs> I like this one with the hot rod hubs under it. And a uh, little, little bit of chew on the wheel wells stuff. And just 
filthy dirty. But the posts are still relatively in it. So anyway, that's another builder. No bumper because some came without bumpers. Oh, we got another AFX here. We're going to, he said, to this one here. So there's a, one of those guys. I don't think we've sold one of them before. Uh, it does have a chassis, maybe even lighted. I'm not sure. We'll find out at the auction. We'll take a look at it. But uh, pretty good overall shape. I see the guy clean off the wing once, and it actually looked pretty mm -hmm. cool, and, and I'm sure it handled better. Uh, more T-Jets. Just, we're just builder lot T-Jets. Not a bad car. Could be cleaned up and displayed to be honest. Oh, look at that. Look at that sweetheart ass chassis. Why did that not end up in my pile? Yeah. Uh, that gear. Yeah. See, that's the beauty of these. I don't go through them. I don't build them up. That's even got, that's even got silicone tires on it. This, that's a class legal car right there. Yeah. And, and maybe that was. I wonder if that's one of Fred's cars. Cause that chassis's clearly been cleaned up. Uh, but that's an early white gear chassis with silk, skinny silicones on the back. So maybe someone tried to run that. Yeah. I don't know how that slipped through. I'm thinking fingers. some of the guys in our club are going to be bidding on that one. That's ready to go. Oh, yeah. Right. And so, and here's another little beater builder. I, I love the decals on it. I like kid decals. I, I actually have a real affinity for the little skull and crossbones on the that came in those sticker sets. So there's an open rivet chassis with the big tires. And this one's got a little wheel well action on it. Great bomber material. Uh, here's a total builder Ferrari GTO. It's got a got a broken post right there. Someone got a little ugly with that rear wheel well, but it does come with a solid rear chassis underneath it. And so another builder. And then here they are. Here's another J car. And the uh, not bad colors, but this one's been modified. It's been cut in the front. And then these uh, these AJs aren't any good. They're actually got big flat spots on them. But uh, this is just another builder, racer, modifier. Uh, you could make an El Camino out of it. We just sent a, you know, we just showed you a good yep. example of what that looks like. And so we got that. And then one more Lola. I don't know why we ended up with so many Lolas. But uh, this car ain't bad, uh, except for that little, little nip right there, little mark on the roof. But uh, that's another good racer. You can lower a Lola right to the track if you want, and that'll be up. So quite a few build, T Jet builders. And then we still have the flex track to to get out, and then uh, the mystery box. So we got plenty to go through, and uh, I think it'll be fun. Yeah. So tune in uh, next Monday, October fifth, two thousand twenty. Just in case you're watching this a year late, um, six thirty p.m. Mountain Standard Time. You do the math to wherever you live, and uh, tune in. We'll have lots of fun, and we got these going too. Oh, we, yeah, got, we got more stickers. Yeah. Um, and um, Oh, and then send your pictures to us yeah, of yeah. where you've placed your sticker. That's right. That's right. And we've got, I, a, we've I, got a few of them. We post them on the Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash TJ Club. So um, that's where the auction is too, by the way. Yeah. And so. then, uh, yeah, apologize for not getting a, 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 an auction going this week. I'm actually really bummed about it, but yeah. uh, that's all right. Next week we'll be back right. and bigger and better than ever. So. Yeah. All right, so thanks for tuning in, and uh, make sure you subscribe. Um, first rule of TJ Club is talk about TJ Club. Tell your friends, tell them to subscribe, tell them to go to the Facebook page and like that as well so that uh, you don't miss any TJ Club goodness. That's so, right. So, see you guys later. All right. Bye.